Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on sound waves. The topic of this video is decibel and intensity calculations, and we want to know how do you calculate the decibel rating from the intensity value, and vice versa, and how do variations in the distance from the source factor into these calculations. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. If you are a physics student trying to understand sound intensity and the decibel scale, the video you're watching is probably not the best starting place. Instead, I would recommend this video, and I've left a link to it in the description section of this video. In this video, I discuss the concept of sound intensity and its dependence upon the power of the source and the distance from the source. I also discuss the decibel scale, where it comes from, and how to take the intensity of two sounds and compare their decibel ratings. For many students of physics, that's really all you need to do for your physics course. So I would shuffle over to this video and watch it, and if you do happen to take it a step further, come back to this video where we'll learn how to use the equations and perform calculations of intensity and decibel. Rating. The decibel scale is a logarithmic scale that compares the intensity of a sound to the intensity of the so-called threshold of hearing, defined mathematically as 1 times 10 to the negative 12 watts per meter squared. If you know the intensity of a sound in watts per meter squared, you can calculate the decibel rating using this equation. dB for decibel rating is equal to 10 multiplied by the log of the ratio of I to I subscript O. The I is the intensity of the sound you're trying to find the decibel rating of, and I subscript O is 1 times 10 to the negative 12 watts per meter squared. If you know the decibel rating, you can calculate the intensity of a sound using this equation. I is equal to I subscript O, 1 times 10 to the negative 12, multiplied by 10 raised to the power X, where X is the bell rating of the sound. The bell rating is simply the decibel rating divided by 10. In this video, we will be using these equations to solve several problems with several different examples. In example one, we'll use this equation to calculate the decibels from a given intensity value. Determine the decibel rating of a sound that has an intensity value of 2.85 times 10 to the negative fifth watts per meter squared. So I know one value, I know the value of I, and I'm looking to calculate the decibel rating, and I already have my equation. So I take that value of I, and I substitute it into the proper location of the equation. That would be inside the, parenth the log uh, parentheses, in the numerator, and then the denominator put 1 times 10 to the negative 12th. Now what I want to do is pull out my calculator and find out what that is, and it tells me it's 74.5 decibels rounded to the first decimal place. Now, when a student misses this problem, it usually has very little to do with the equation or the substitution. It most often has to do with the use of the calculator. So let's talk about it. There's two broad categories of calculators. There's first the graphing calculator, which is a multi-line calculator. You might have bought it for your math class for 100 bucks or so, and you use it for physics, and that's fine. Uh, I'm using an online graphing calculator called Desmos.com, and this is how I enter my numbers. And a graphing calculator generally will make this calculation a lot easier than the other broad category of calculators. It's going to look like this, 10 times the log of a, a ratio, and you'll notice the numerator denominator matches up with what I have in the equation. 74.5 decibels is my rounded answer. Now the other type of calculator it's a little trickier on, and this is what I call the scientific calculator or the $10 calculator. And when you're using the $10 calculator to do this problem, you want to work the equation from the right side to the left side a little unusual. That is to mean you begin by finding the ratio of I to I subscript O. So I, I pull out my calculator and find out what 2.85 times 10 to the negative fifth divided by 1 times 10 to the negative twelfth is, and, and that's the first step. Second step I recommend is that you just now, with that number on your calculator, press the log button. So when I do that, it tells me the log of this number is 7.4 five, four, eight, blah, blah, blah. You just need to have the number on your calculator first and then find the log button, press it, and it's gonna tell you the result. And what you found at that point is the bell rating of the sound. The last step is you multiply by 10 and you get the decibels of 74.5 decibels. 
In example two, I'm going to use this equation to calculate the intensity from a given decibel level. Determine the intensity of a sound that has a decibel rating of 97.2 decibels. I'm going to begin by writing down what I know. I know one value. And writing down what I'm looking for, I'm looking for the value of i. And then I'm going to write down the equation, but it's already written down. Now I'm going to take this 97.2 and use it to find the x value, the power on 10. So 97.2 divided by 10 is 9.72. I raise 10 to that power multiplied by 1 times 10 to the negative 12th is shown in the equation here. And then I work out the solution on my calculator. It comes out to be 5.25 times 10 to the negative third watts per meter squared. Like example one, when a student misses this problem, I usually look to see if they can use their calculator correctly. And let's go through that. There's two types of calculators. There's the more expensive multi-line graphing calculator, like Desmos com or your TI 80 something or whatever you have the, what you bought for your math class and and um, and here's the solution as it would show on my calculator and you'll notice that I have the 1 times 10 to negative 12th there I have the 10 raised to a power and you can put in 9.72 or as I did 97.2 divided by 10 and you get your answer and you can express the answer as 0 0.005248 blah 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 or you can round it to the third significant digit you can write it in scientific notation either would probably work for your teacher. Now, it's more difficult to do this problem on the $10 single line graphing or, or scientific calculator. So what I'd recommend you do is you do the work the equation from the right side towards the equal sign. That is, you begin by determining the value of x, the power on 10. And so you take the 97.2, you divide by 10, you get 9.72. Once you get that, make sure that's on your calculator and you want to raise 10 to that power. So the trick there is to make sure you can find that button button on your calculator is usually a button 10 raised to some power. And um, it, you might have trouble finding it because there might not be a button labeled that, but it might be the second function button. And so you'd have to hit second and then a button that gives you 10 to the x. And oftentimes it's second log. So look at the log button, see what's printed on the calculator panel just above it. It's probably 10 to the x. You go second log and that's like going 10 to the x. So you, you'll have to find that on your calculator. It varies per calculator, but I'm guessing on most it's usually a second function and it's above the, the log. Now once you've found out what um, 10 raised to the 9.72 power is, you can mul you multiply by 1 times 10 to the negative 12th and that gets you your answer. It's 5.25 times 10 to the negative third watts per meter squared. In a physics problem, distance is often factored into the problem. So we need to know the relationship between intensity and the distance. The intensity of a sound at a given distance r from the source is given by this equation. i is equal to the power of the source in watts divided by 4 pi r squared, where r is the distance. In this equation, p is actually the property of the source of sound, like you might have speakers that are 500 watt speakers 500 watts is the power. R, this is the distance from the source, and I is the intensity we're trying to calculate at this specific distance. Now, when you have an equation that looks like this, it's often written in the form of a proportionality statement that goes I is proportional to 1 over R squared. Another way to state that is to say the intensity is inversely proportional to the distance squared. Now, when you have an equation like this, there's a few things that can be inferred from it. First, you can say that when the R goes up, the I goes down. They're inversely related. And the factor by which it goes down is the square of the factor by which R goes up. We could put it like this. If you were to double the R, make it twice as big, two times further from the source, you would cause the intensity to go down the inverse direction by a factor of two squared. Since you doubled the R, you, you got to double, you got to square the doubling, you know, you get four, and, and you get one fourth of the original value. Similarly, if you were to triple the distance, you would make the I go down by a tripling squared factor. So it becomes one ninth of the original value. And then finally, if you were to make R smaller, like maybe you were to half the r and make it two times smaller, you make the i bigger. So the i would increase by a factor of 2 squared. You would have four times the original i value. 
In example three, we're going to calculate the intensity from a given power and a given distance from the source. The question goes, determine the intensity a distance of 2.8 meters from a 450 watt speakers. So I know the value of R is 2.8. I know the value of P is 450 watts. And here's my equation with the P and the R in it. So I'm going to substitute the 2.8 meters into the denominator and make sure it gets squared and the 450 into the numerator. Now you'll get this right as long as you make sure you take the 450 on your calculator and you divide by the 4 and you divide by a pi and you divide by the 2.8 squared. If you do all that right, you're going to get 4.6 watts per meter squared. That's rounded to the second significant digit. Now in example 4, we're going to use this equation as a guide to thinking about how variations in distance would affect the intensity. So we're going to use the equation as a proportionality statement. And what I have in example 4 is I'm given the intensity 1.6 meters from a source. I'm told that it's 7.2 7 times 10 to the negative fourth watts per meter squared. And it's a part A, part B, part C problem. And I have to find the intensity 3.2 meters, 4.8 meters, and 6.4 meters from the source. Now, I don't know if you caught it, but the 3.2 is 2 times the 1.6. The 4.8 of part B is 3 times the 1.6 that's given. And the 6.4 of part C is 4 times 1.6 meters that is given. So it's asking me to find the effect of doubling, tripling, and quadrupling the distance upon the intensity value at that particular location. So I'm not going to plug and chug. I'm going to use the equation as a guide to thinking. I'm going to start with the 7.2 times 10 to the negative fourth, and I'm going to change it based upon the rule for doubling, tripling, and quadrupling. So from the previous slide, we learned that if you double the distance, you make the intensity one-fourth the value because of the inverse square law. And so I have to square the doubling, and I have to divide by that factor. So I'm taking 7.2 times 10 to the negative fourth, and I'm going to divide by 4, and I get my answer. In part C, I do something very similar, but since the distance was tripled, I have to divide by tripling squared. I have to divide by 9. And in part C, since the distance was quadrupled from 1.6 to 6.4, I have to divide by 4 squared. Example 5 is a problem which we have to pretty much put everything we've learned so far in this presentation together to answer. It says the decibel rating, a distance of 1.6 meters from a source is 54.2 decibels. Determine the decibel rating, a distance of, and check out the numbers, 3.2 meters, 4.8 meters, and 6.4 meters from the source. And I don't know if you saw it, but the 3.2 is twice 1.6. The 4.8 of part B is 3 times the given 1.6 meters, and the 6.4 of part C is 4 times the given 1.6 meters, and that's going to be important. Now, we do know that the intensity is inversely proportional to the distance squared. I is proportional 1 over R squared. We know that. We've used that in example 4. The question we have to ask is, is the decibel rating inversely proportional to the radius to the distance squared? And the answer is no, it's not. There would be no reason to think it is because the decibel rating and the intensity are not linearly related. They're logarithmically related. So this statement's not true, and that means you can't use it as a shortcut. And that means that to solve this problem, you pretty much need to approach it in three steps. The first step is you're going to take the decibel rating at the first location, 1.6 meters, and find the intensity value of that location. Then you're going to use the inverse square law in order to calculate the intensity at the second location. And then once you get the intensity at the second location, you're going to find the decibel rating at the second location. That second location for part A would be 3.2 meters away, and that for part B it would be uh, 4.8, and part C is 6.4. So to go from, to do, to do the first step, that's just like what you did in example one, and to do the last step, that's just like what you did in example two, and to do the second step in the middle, that's just like you did in example four. To calculate the intensity at the second location, you take the intensity at the first location, and you divide by two squared, you divide by three squared, and you divide by four squared, respectively, for parts A, B, and C. 
Let's get started. Doing the first step, finding the intensity at location 1 given that the decibel rating is 54.2 meters. Just like part 1, example 1 in, in this slide deck, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the 54.2 decibels, I'm going to divide by 10, I'm going to raise 10 to that power and multiply by 1 times 10 to the negative 12 and I get 2.63 times 10 to the negative 7 watts per meters. That's the intensity at the first location. And the intensity at the second location will be smaller since that second location for part A, B, and C are all further away from the source is 1.6. In order to find the intensity at the second location for part A, I divide by 2 squared. To find it for part B, I divide by 3 squared. And to find it for part C, I divide by 4 squared. I now have intensity values at the second location. The final step of the problem is to find the decibel level at these three at, at the second location for part A, part B, part C. To find the decibel level from a given intensity level, you do it just like you did it in example one. You take the intensity, you divide by 1 times 10 to the negative 12, you take the log of that ratio, and you multiply by 10. You end up getting 48.2 decibels, 44.7 decibels, and finally 42.2 decibels. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are three resources that you find on our website, and I've left links to each in the description section of this video. Of the three, I highly recommend the calculator pad problem sets. You'll get a collection of problems with randomly generated numbers. There's a an answer field for entering your answer, you'll get immediate feedback and multiple opportunities to get it correct. We even find for many of the problems an audio guided help page that gives you details about how to approach the problem. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H and I thank you for watching.